Okay, there are four efficiencies that are important to um, engine performance. The first is the indicated thermal efficiency, and this is the efficiency of the thermodynamic cycle that the engine is operating on. Um, <clears throat> so for most race engines, that's four-stroke spark ignition engines. So there's just one cycle. Uh, <clears throat> but the efficiency of the cycle is a function of engine speed and load and whether or not you're using boost and a bunch of other things. Uh, Second efficiency is the efficiency of the combustion process. So when you buy fuel, you're buying chemical energy, and what you need is thermal energy uh, in the combustion chamber, and so the combustion process converts chemical energy to thermal energy, and the combustion efficiency is simply a measure of how efficiently it does that. Then we have a volumetric efficiency, and that's the effectiveness of inducting air into the engine. And here I'm using effectiveness because, as we'll learn shortly, volumetric efficiency isn't actually an efficiency. Uh, and then finally, we have the mechanical efficiency, and that's the efficiency of overcoming frictional, uh, parasitic, and viscometric losses between the top piston and the engine output shaft. Okay, some more important definitions. First is uh, the stoichiometric air-fuel ratio. That's a mass ratio, the mass of air to the mass of gasoline if you're operating under conditions with no excess air and no excess gasoline, like production engines operate that stoichiometric most of the time. Uh, if there's no subscript S on it, then that's the actual air-fuel uh, mass ratio. And then the inverse of the stoichiometric uh, air-fuel uh, ratio is the uh, fuel air uh, ratio, stoichiometric fuel air ratio, again a mass ratio. And then we obviously have an actual fuel air mass ratio. Uh, <clears throat> then we have the uh, constant pressure lower heating value of the fuel, and this is a measure of the energy density of the fuel. And in fact, uh, every fuel has six different heating values. This is the one that's relevant, the constant pressure lower heating value, relevant from the perspective of engine performance. Uh, then we have a couple of ratios of ratios. One is the equivalence ratio, and that is the ratio of the actual fuel air, fuel air ratio to the stoichiometric fuel air ratio. Uh, <clears throat> the equivalence ratio is nice because it bounds all lean mixtures between zero and one. Uh, and typically we don't operate very rich, and so we're very interested in operating lean, so bounding all the lean mixtures between zero and one is convenient. <clears throat> We also have uh, lambda, the excess air ratio, and that is the inverse of the equivalence ratio, or it's the uh, stoichiometric air-fuel ratio over the actual air-fuel ratio. Uh, the excess air ratio bounds all lean mixtures between one and infinity, so not quite as convenient, except that we now have a sensor that measures lambda directly, and so people are starting to use lambda more and more as their... Uh, ratio of ratios for describing the uh, stoichiometry of the engine. But this does get confusing for old guys like me who started off with the equivalence ratio. SOI is the crank angle at the start of injection. EVC is the crank angle at exhaust valve closing. EVO is crank angle at exhaust valve opening. IVC is crank angle at intake valve closing. And IVO is the crank angle at intake valve opening. And then we have uh, engine displacement. Uh, I'm using a capital N for engine speed or RPM, uh, lowercase n for the number of cylinders. X is the revolutions per intake stroke, and that's two for a four stroke engine. Uh, v sub S is the swept volume or the displacement per cylinder. And then rho inlet is the inlet air density after any airflow measuring devices. <coughs> Uh, and here, make some comments on uh, units, uh, including units that are used in production ECMs. Uh, ECMs have been around for more than a quarter of a century now, and so <clears throat> the people who started generating uh, the onboard computer control system started off in the English system of units, and now they've converted over to the SI system of units. But that means that the control systems uh, have a lot of legacy units in them, uh, so there'll be English uh, units or American Standard units and also SI units and combinations thereof. That's okay because EPA likes to use mixed units like grams per mile, uh, but just something you need to be aware of. 